So today let us look at you know Java collections. Collections is a framework uh, provided by Java in a package called java.util. Okay. Now what are this collections about? Collections are primarily like you know how do we actually like store uh, I mean a single variable means you declare a variable and uh, uh, store the value single value I means suppose if you have multiple values to store then we go for something like an array right so in an array if you look at you know a simple uh, if you try to do something like this now I declared an array of my array of size 10 and then I try to access an element at 20 so what am I going to get it's not going, a, uh, sorry? Exception. Yeah. That's an exception, right? Yeah, yeah, it's an exception. It says java.lang dot array index out of bounds exception. Or now that means that you know my array of I can't even assign the value with any other location. Okay. So this also will lead to array out of bounds exception. The reason is that arrays are fixed in, in size. When you initialize, when you, when you initialize the array, you specify the maximum size of it. So there is a static way of you know in the sense in in the beginning itself the size is specified, and there is no way to increase the size dynamically. Okay. So and also like you know in arrays you just have um, set of your values or objects like in a queue okay 0 1 2 3 4 and that's it there is no other functionality there suppose if I want to sort them or if I want to add one more element in the middle or you know or if you want to replace a value just that you can do or um, I want to remove an element from the beginning and then I want to make sure that uh, the elements are remaining elements are realigned okay so I mean if you want to do anything with an array with a set of objects or set of values you won't be able to do with a with an array but such as if I have you know homogeneous objects you know same set of objects if I have 20 number values then I can or 10 values of int then I could use an array int and I give them my array name as my array equal to new int of 10 okay suppose my application needs 10 now and maybe that after two three months you realize that okay now I need the value to be 20 and this code into is in production and uh, in order to make this code work you need to apply a patch you need to change this signature to 20 and then try to use it there is no other way you need to I mean you need to really change the code but now what if what if I want to what if I want to have some flexibility of you know auto incrementing size or auto decrementing size and I want to have some additional common utility methods on top of this maybe that sorting is a common logic right sorting is a common logic maybe I want to have sorting okay or maybe I want to have you know now I want to have now 10 I want to have whatever is the size you know I mean I don't really want to care about the size okay let there be some someone taking care of it I keep adding elements I keep removing elements okay and uh, maybe whenever I require I'll ask you know just to give me this elements I just you know retrieve the values and maybe use it okay so you do typical CRUD operations CRUD stands for C R U D create, retrieve, update, and delete. You know, mostly all all the applications that are available on internet are even in your computer are primarily they belong to create, retrieve, update, and delete. Okay, so. I want to do 
I want to do some operations and I want to do this kind of operations and I never want to worry about something like array index out of bounds exception. Array index out of bounds exception that happened. See, that happened uh, when we try to actually run this line. Now, actually, if I run, it will get even before. Line number 15. So if I look at this, you know, because uh, the array size is 10 and I'm trying to assign a value at the 15th location. It fails. I don't want to have this kind of errors. Okay. So how can I do that? So the solution is Java collections. Java collections are utility classes available in a package called java.util java.util now if you look at this particular thing or maybe I'll, I'll just show you um, a small diagram so this is how it looks like the collections hierarchy what we have is a Collection is a class or uh, let me check that. It's an interface, okay? We have collection as an interface and then followed by set and list they are also interfaces only okay yeah list is an interface okay then you have sorted set so this this list is if I look at this this uh, the top one is interfaces sorry he gave them as interfaces and then you have and abstract classes called abstract list and abstract set I'll talk about these things but basically the framework has certain set of interfaces and then implementation classes and some common logic is into abstract uh, abstract classes okay so the complete hierarchy will be uh, Let's say this guy should be having another diagram. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He has uh, I mean, the required stuff for me. Okay. So basically you have, um, I'll, I'll explain, you know, what is list and what is set. And that is one more thing called map. look at this add you know I'll, I'll, I'll actually like you know I'll, I think first I'll, I'll try to write one sample code and show you and how it can work now one question what is synchronized keyword when do we use it Go ahead, Sidam. RCG.
uh, to access the uh, one thread at a time, uh, we need to use the synchronization keyword. Yes, yes. To enforce that the particular object is accessed by uh, only one thread at any point of time, only one thread at any point of time, we use we use um, uh, the synchronized keyword. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk about it. I mean, we have a context here. I'll talk about it now. See here. I'm trying to create an object called a list and where is it? List is an interface java.util.list and when I do new and some, some name here what it could be? Is it an interface or class? I can only use new operator for classes okay so what I'm doing is I'm creating an object for now what I do is I created a list object okay my list dot add see here the methods so I can add say 100 or list dot add maybe 10 dot add 5 Okay, so now this is the list that I have. I'm I'm adding it, and do you see any reference to size? No. No. Yes. And uh, let me show you my list dot size. Interestingly, see the size here is actually like is automatically growing because initially it is three. I added few more elements and the size now when I print the size it is six. And let's see the same thing here. array has something property called length It actually printed output as 10 but I will comment the exceptions part and show you the plain output. So array length is 10. How? Here the length is nothing but you know irrespective of whether you have data or not. I did not add any elements to the array. I just declared that array initialize it to a size of 10. But still when you count the length it gives you the length. It says 10. So in case of an array, if you look at whatever is the size that you are initializing, that is the size it is going to hold. Whether you have data or if you have objects or not. Okay. So it's uh, is a primitive kind of thing. Okay. There is no there is no other functionality other than this. But now if I look at this. What I can do is see uh, I have uh, another class called collections dot sort and uh, my list you know I'll actually I'll write one uh, and what I'll do is 
I'll show you something called iterator ir equal to ls dot just wait a moment I'll I'll So here, uh, initially, uh, initially when I print the output, I'll explain, you know, this uh, iterator concept, but this is basically like, you know, to access, to access the, to retrieve the values in the collection or in the list and uh, to browse through them, just I want to browse through the objects so I can use something called iterator. Iterator is a, um, it is actually a design pattern. It is a design pattern uh, and uh, what it will actually have is it will have a snapshot of the objects, snapshot of the objects in the collection class. So what I am doing here is when you do my list dot iterator, you are getting iterator object and I am saying ir dot has next. Has next means as long as you know until till the last last object, what I do is I am printing the value or I can say int um, int value equal to i r dot next and I, I need to do some type casting i r dot I can do the same thing here. Okay. Okay. So now initially the values in my list are hundred, ten, five, one hundred one, ten, fifty. Now, if uh, I want to sort them, so, I mean, sorting is something, you know, you try to write some logic for it, use an array, take this as an assignment, try to write, and believe me, it does take some time. Getting it correct for the first time is, at least with my experience, I have interviewed so many people, and I also also seen uh, many students doing mistakes. I mean, I mean, writing a, I mean, uh, working, working algorithm in a paper I found that people are little uh, people have some difficulty so sorting is not that easy as it looks like so now what I have is I just say collections dot sort so collections is a class okay and that takes a list object and you can just call the sort and then it will sort the it will realign the objects in the list in a sorted order and now when I print, it was printing, it was printing in the order. Now, okay, this actually like, this is at the outset, this is how it looks like what a collection is about, what a collection class can do, okay. In this case, what I have taken as a sample is array list. What I have taken as a sample is array list. Java has multiple 
multiple calcium classes as we saw in this diagram now primarily they are broadly into they are broadly into two two sectors one is called list and the other one is called set what is a set in mathematics you have any idea set group of variables group of variables but um, any specific differentiating factor maybe increasing order zero order. no uh, set actually has some property called avoiding duplicates it does not contain duplicates if we clearly look at this particular thing now uh, if you see the output 10 was printed two times it allowed me to enter the value of 10 two times whereas a set Now what I'm trying to do is I created a you know, set of set for set also I created one object for set also I created one object and say and I'm trying to add I'm trying to add um, a 10 value 10 for multiple times 5 times okay and then added 20 and then added 30 now let me see what is the size of this set and also try to print the values in the set. See here, surprisingly the size of the set is 3 whereas if it was, if you do the same thing for a list then the value will be, what will be the actual value if it is a set, sorry list, if it is an array list what will be the value of uh, size it will be it will be 5 why because I'm adding 5 times sorry it will be not not 5 but it is okay I did not see the top 2 elements so 5 plus 2 it will be 7 if, if it is a array list if it is an array list it will be 7 the size will be 7 and array list allows or list allows duplicates list allows duplicates but set no, it doesn't allow duplicates. It does not allow duplicates. There is a primary difference between a set and a list. A list uh, allows duplicate values, duplicate objects, whereas set does not allow. There is a primary difference between set and list. Okay, 
these are two important collection classes okay java.util has all the collections related package uh, classes there are so many of them but now i'm starting with you know we primarily need to focus on three different things one is set sorry list and then set and then one more thing called hash map or map okay map i'll discuss that but first we'll see list and set is the difference clear a list and set the difference is in terms of list will allow duplicates set will not allow duplicates clear yeah yes so uh, to go to next step what i want to do is that you know what all uh, what are this collections all about okay i mean what kind of methods we have if i look at an array list class now this is the source code of array list for now for the moment you don't worry about this one this is called generics i'll talk about this generics the moment i mean um, i mean actually as part of collections itself but maybe i'll uh, we will have that discussion a little later maybe that tomorrow okay but today i want to explain array list has set you know has set basically implementation and also hash map now if i look at this particular thing now this is the class now if i look at you know the methods see here is empty size is a method is empty contains index of last index of clone to array i mean basically clone to array these things sorry this this seems to be no uh, the clone is actually a method from the ancestor class called object okay but then get then set add add at location remove at location remove object and uh, add all range check you know you have so many methods so many methods we have so many methods here okay so we need to know about these methods so we need to know about these methods to some extent maybe that i may not cover you know some of the methods in detail but i'll i'll do cover you know um, these methods what i want to see is now suppose element at second position okay and i want to i want to see my list dot i have to use get okay i have to use give the correct index second position means actually i mean uh, it should be one because the index starts with zero element in second position is 10 because this is a, this is the first one this is the second one but index wise a uh, zero this will be zeroth index this is will be first and then is second because you can you can try this out third position Third position means I need to give two as a value because the indexing starts with zero. See here, element at second position is ten, element at third position is five. So, what actually I'm trying to do is something called get. Here in this case, what I want to show you is the method called get. Now, I have seen this, you know, we have seen this add, okay, and get. And in, for add, I again, you know, there is something called my list. And this method, add has another overloaded method. And where I say, I need to give the index 0, 1, 2, 3. So maybe I want to change the value at 50. 1, 2, 
3 4 5 6 so that means I need to give 5 I want to change the sixth element from uh, 50 to 500 now you could see uh, uh, what, what went wrong what went wrong when I added okay 0 1 2 3 4 5 let me print the value What is really happening here is it's actually putting the value, inserting the value so the next value is what happened, what happened? Yeah, value at 5 is fifth index is uh, 50. I did not give space so <coughs> now when I added an element you know this is allowing me to insert a value at the fifth location so the existing value at the fifth location is going back to next one okay now set let us look at this I want to set a value now fifth location I gave 500 now and sixth location I have actually I have uh, the other value that is 50 so now I want to make that as now 50 should be disappearing from the see now 50 is not there when I add a value if I look at you know we are looking at multiple methods add it's adding a value there so if there is uh, if there are some values already next when you call add method it will go and get added at the end of the list okay now when I do something called add and give the index location as well index you know at which place I want to add my value that is actually inserting a value at that location so suppose in this in the existing queue if there are five people and someone joins in the middle so the Q gets realigned. Q gets realigned. Okay. Now, other option is that you pull out one person from the Q and put a new person there. Then only that particular location, whoever was there, that is that is the change. But other people will remain same. But when I do add an index, now this is also add method. But now we are specifying the explicit index at which location this value need to be added. So add does not replace okay and for replacing you have you know if there is a value already and I don't like that value I want to set it to something else then use a method called set and give the index okay. Now if we look at you know my list dot you just try to look at this methods okay and you know add all add all collection suppose I have a list I have a list and I want to add this list to some other list then I can use this method I can use this method now in this case in this case now uh, if there is another list okay if there is another list and I try to add to my list using this method add uh, add all and give the list object here what will happen is it will add all the objects from the other list to this list it will not replace the original values of the present list that is my list and rather it will append at the end of my list it will append at the end of my list okay now 
Uh, other thing says that add all and index. Um, here insert the elements, you know, insert the elements into the particular location. So this one also, this one I think it will move, it should be moving the rest of the values, rest of the values to next. In the sense, if you ever have, let me, I'll, I'll actually like show you this. Uh, the sorting part for now I will just comment. Now maybe what I will do is I'll just comment the sorting part alone. I'll just comment the sorting part alone. Now see here the original list is this 10, 100, 10, 5, 101, 10, 500, 5000. Now what happened is I am adding at the index of 2 that means 0, 1, 2 so that it is actually joining at the third location and uh, I added I added another collection. Right? What did I do? I created another list and I am adding that list. So, what really is happening is it's actually putting pushing the remaining elements. You know, it added two elements give at the given location from the given location, and then it pushed remaining values to the end of the queue. That is actually list. Okay. So that's primarily this is one method add all, and uh, what else we have. Clear means removes all the elements from the list. Contains. Now searching logic. Searching is it a easy thing? Searching I think is relatively easy when compared to when compared to sorting. So if I want to see whether this contains, you know, uh, whether the list contains another value or not, you know. Now it says you know the value contains it written true because I do have the value 500 in the list. Okay, so next my list dot contains contains all contains all actually is about uh, I mean searching for whether certain uh, collection object is there or not not just one number but a collection of numbers. If all of them are there present in the list or not, is we can verify that using contains. Then equals method is from the object class, uh, and then a get is 
the getting a particular element we have already used that value that this method get class hash code or from again ja, I mean um, the this thing it's from object class and uh, then if if you look at index of index of and give the value index of give the value index of say suppose if I say thousand So index of thousand is two gives the location. Index of thousand is two. Why it is two? It is two maybe because yeah we added two elements right here in the middle. So um, yeah. So the the list that I am seeing is not a, a latest list. Or rather, I could close this thing so. And uh, so index of thousand. Now this is the list. Okay. So first index is what zero one two. So thousand is at the second index. That should be the value. Uh, index of thousand is two. See here. So like this you have so utility methods. Like this you have utility methods. So what you do is please go back and refer to all the methods. Is empty. Is empty means it will give whether it is empty or not. Last index of. Last index of is suppose if there is an object that in the list and you know we discussed that list allows duplicates. I can keep adding, you know, thousand, 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 you know, you need to add multiple times, it will allow. Set, though it has, you know, the add method does not complain anything, but the way it stores the values is unique way. It doesn't show or store duplicate values. Okay. So, uh, list iterator, it's also similar to the iterator concept. List iterator over the implemented objects list in proper sequence. It's notify notify all from object remove remove an index and remove an object remove index means if I give an index then it will remove the object from that particular location okay and remove object uh, I mean I don't know at what is the index of a particular object but I don't want to have this object in my array list then use the second method second remove method remove all if you want to remove all the elements from a given collection, then use remove all. Retain all. Retain all means this list that are contained in this collection. In other words, removes from this list all the that are not contained in the specific collection. Uh -huh. This is interesting. So retain all is nothing but now suppose if I have uh, maybe 15 objects in a list. Now if you add another list okay add all uh, then add you know a list of five elements then it will be 20 now suppose instead of adding all if I you say retain all maybe you know it's it's actually it will retain only those elements from this collection whatever are there in the collection um, in the parameter parameter collection then only those values will be remaining in the your collection that is my list and rest of them will be removed that is one method set we saw this thing size sub list okay sub list means now I can give from index and to index and extract a sub list okay extract a sub list and this is the method for it to array this is an exciting thing to array is an exciting thing so my list dot to array will give you an object array now
Okay, basically for now, uh, actually like it's an int. It's an int array, so. Uh -huh, this guy is not giving any choice to. Fine. So basically like, you know, here I'm, I mean, uh, how do I fix this? I don't know. Uh-huh, now see, it worked, okay. So, um, I'm actually like, you know, uh, in uh, primitive types, uh, auto-boxing, auto-unboxing works at the primitive level, but when you start using arrays, that the particular logic will not work, but two array will give you an array of the particular, you know, all the elements in the this thing. And what is the difference between an array and uh, um, uh, array list? I explained in the beginning. Srikant, you there? Suji? Yeah. Yeah. What is the difference between an array and array list? Uh, there is only one difference we can say is that uh, uh, for array we need to uh, declare the size of it, hmm. but uh, for the array list, uh, there is no need to declare the size of that. Right, right, exactly. And also another uh, thing is that you know array list has lot of methods on top of it. An array is a plain array; it is not an object. Plain array, okay? Collection in case of array list, you have various methods. Uh, you can actually search for it. You can add, uh, I mean, you can add in multiple ways, you can remove from uh, the list, you have methods. Whereas in case of an array, there are no methods because it's a, just an array and in a collection of same type of object. Whereas array list is a class from java.util package and has lot of utility methods. Apart from auto growing the size. Okay. So this is how you have so many methods in the, you have so many methods in the array list class. So I have not shown you those methods here in the set in case of a set class but the methods are almost same. Okay. The methods are almost same. We will have my set dot see here add add all clear contains contains you know notify remove size to array. You have the similar methods. Okay. Very same methods you have in the set object set set you know is an interface list is an interface the implementation for list interface is array list and the implementation for set implement, uh, set interface is has set in the java has set in the java okay so these are the this is about you know the introduction about java collections okay and i mean the sense primarily two of them what we will do is um, i'll explain now see Collection, list and set are interfaces. If we look at, if we look at, uh, where is it? F3, I'll, I'll go here and then see something called collection. Collection is an interface. See, it has various methods. See, it has various methods. Okay. And in case of set, they may be having few more methods. Okay. So, this is, uh, I mean, uh, the collection has some methods, interface, collection is an interface, then you have, let me go back to my diagram, okay, collections is an interface, uh, collection is an interface, list is an interface, set is an interface, and set has another derived, another derived uh, set called sorted, set is an, in, an interface again, okay, now we have, Abstract classes, although I did not discuss about abstract list and abstract set, 
there are classes called abstract list and abstract set having some common methods. Okay, now this is how it looks like, you know, from an abstract list or, you know, for list thing, I have array list and there is something called a vector and there is something called, you know, uh, abstract sequential, linker list. Okay, linker list for now, let us discard. Abstract, I mean, in, in terms of list, you have two things. One is array list and other one is sector, vector. Other one is vector. So, I will talk about that particular uh, difference between these things little later. And in case of a set, you have has set and tree set. It is more about how the values are stored in the within the set. Okay. Then, hmm. That's about the basically for uh, this is about okay. This is the hierarchy of uh, collections framework. Okay, this is the hierarchy of the collection framework, and also one thing that I, that is not there on the diagram and uh, I have used is collections dot sort. Now collections, see the collections is a class. Okay. Collections, there is an S at the end. It, it looks like a plural word. Whereas the interface wise, if you look at it is just collection. Not there is no S here. Okay. There is no S uh, at the end. So this is about uh, I mean this is the basic hierarchy of the classes in the java.util. Okay. And uh, there is one more thing that is left out is called map. There is one more thing that we let of this called map and also yeah we can pretty much do that as well so that we'll have some logical conclusion on the array list but still there will be some discussion that we will be doing but tomorrow. A map is a key value pair. Map is a key value pair. Okay. And how this key value pair will work is, um, uh, suppose, uh, what is the situation we can take? Suppose they says, let us take uh, cricket scores. Okay. Cricket scores. And they say that, you know, uh, the final scoreboard, um, what you have is the team name and the score. How many matches played, how many won, how many lost, how, how many were tied. Okay. So, that is, then, then what is the, the key is the team name and the value is the list of values. Okay. Or maybe one value or maybe another object having multiple values. So, um, the team name and values there is a key is the team name and values value is the uh, whatever you see on the right hand side so it, it now if i look at you know if we look at array list such as there is a mapping there is a mapping but it is a hard coded mapping it is the hard coded mapping index and value index and value what is the value at this index okay that means that you know the index number and the actual value stored at that particular index or there is a one to one mapping there is a mapping but now uh, index is in this case is a number instead of you know if I look at you know if uh, we basically like we look at the add method okay when I'm adding uh, there is one more add right look let us look at this method so what is the phi here my list dot add phi comma 500 what is phi here Index. index, right? Yes, yeah. it is index, and uh, uh, so it is uh, basically like key value pair only, but hard coded index. Index is hard coded; it will always be zero, one, two, three, four kind of thing. Now, if you want to enforce that, instead of the numbers, I want to use my own keys, my own um, keys. Then, then that has a class called hash map or map map is a map is an interface and hash map is a corresponding class so how i can do that is map 
my map equal to new hash map I need to import okay so now here I can don't worry about the yellow thing I'll uh, talk about the generics and you know tomorrow we will close that part but then here put key value pair I'm saying just you know here, here I'm, I can store Java training okay and say my map that put three count okay like this I can keep adding now here what I'm doing is key value pair combination it looks like a list but uh, the uh, difference is that it is a key value pair it is a key value pair now what I can do is now because you're talking about keys and you're talking about values so it is possible that you can only get the keys from this collection that is a you know, map and it is also possible that you only get the values how I can get uh, my map dot get key set key set means it will give a set of my map dot values see values will give me a collection values will me give me a collection uh, and key set where I'm going to store So basically this is a key value pair if you're talking about map and it's a key value pair and also look at this declaration map is an interface map is an interface from java.util package and hash map is the implementation and this is also again from this is also again from java.util package you know you see here so whatever imports we have here they are from java dot util package now here this is how I can get you know when I want to do something with the key set and you know I can pretty much extract the key set and also if I want to I want to only get the values as a list and I can probably use map dot you know this one dot values it will give a collection object it will give a collection object okay now uh, we will actually see this and you know we will continue the discussion on uh, uh, collections and also uh, we will look at uh, we will look at generics generics uh, and um, um, I mean uh, and we will close the discussion on collections tomorrow but what you do is please go back and uh, come back with questions please try please try to uh, uh, see some programs it is a simple concept only but it's a simple concept but it's it is enough complex if you don't understand it properly